-hmm. So let's talk about actual marketing, social media. Can you just maybe start with the one-on-one tips for our listeners who they only own a couple buildings, you know, they're not Selbikovic, yeah. but th they're working there. Yeah. What yeah. are some things that they should be doing right off the bat? Have an amazing LinkedIn profile. And what I mean by that is have it completely built out. Have your professional bio on there. Have your contact information on there. Have um, LinkedIn has like all these different features now where you can like have your areas of expertise, like just really spend some time building out your LinkedIn profile um, because LinkedIn has this new thing called LinkedIn uh, contributions where they kind of have these AI generated articles where you can just like share your two cents on anything. And with then ideally that will lead people to your profile and you want it to look nice and everything. And then on the flip side, if media, if you're starting to do some media outreach, of course, they're going to Google you. And of course, they're going to look at your LinkedIn. And if they can get a really good picture of who you are and why you're an expert, that only helps you as where if the profile is pretty, you know, basic or bland, it, it's, it's not helping you. And then on top of LinkedIn, um, I would say, um, don't be afraid to put yourself out there. There are a handful of services that are free and some that are not that expensive that you can actually like get in touch with reporters. Um, my personal favorite one is called Quoted. It's spelled kind of funny. It's QW. Um, but on Quoted, you can keyword search like real estate and you can see what stories reporters are working on and the types of expertise that they want. And then you can like throw your hat in the ring. Like you can like send them a pitch. So if you're just getting started and you want to put yourself out there, that's a really great way to, you know, immediately connect with reporters. And there's also some low hanging fruit opportunities out there as well. There's companies like Authority Magazine, Canvas Loop, uh, or no, excuse me, Canvas Rebel, Entrepreneur Loop, those three, where you can submit yourself for an interview and they send you a Google Doc and then you just like fill it out and then they'll publish it, which gives you some third party credibility. Um, so, you know, you guys have a podcast. I don't know how many people cold email you like, can I be on the pod? But when you have a few links out there online, you know, especially some interviews and stuff, that's only going to help you when you are reaching out. Because then when people are Googling you, they're like, oh, I saw you in Authority Magazine. And like, he, that was an interesting read. Or they they see these other things that you're doing. Um, and that goes along with posting on social media too, like staying staying active and sharing useful content out there. Yeah, that's good stuff. What, I mean, when I look at LinkedIn or, you know, any of these social platforms, like, I guess you could be looking for investors. Mm -hmm. Are there other target audiences? If you're someone who's, you know, buying rental properties. So I guess maybe if you're big enough, your tenants will look you up. Um, but, but what, am I missing anything obvious here? I would say with LinkedIn, a lot of people think about LinkedIn really kind of myopically, like I'm not looking for a new job. And it's like, that's cool. <laughs> like it's honestly for me, like I've never used it in that way. I've used it as like a marketing vehicle because you can connect with, um, so Mark Retson, who was on the pod recently, Hello Data, he has like 40,000 connections because, you know, he's, all into automation and ads everyone. Um, but because of that, he has a huge audience. So when he posts, a lot of people see that content. So I feel like if you're trying to grow an audience, LinkedIn is one of the easiest places to grow an audience because you can just connect with people and that you can connect with the people that you want to see the content. And, and LinkedIn has the Google algorithm down. So if you Google your name, I mean, Google, LinkedIn is always the first or second or third link there that someone, if they're looking you up, they're going to click on it. Yes. I'm very bullish on LinkedIn. I do. I, I use like a password manager. If you were to see me try to log into LinkedIn, you'd say I have like 30 logins. Like that's one thing that we do for people. Like we, we run their LinkedIn's cause they're like, I don't have time for this. And it's like, cool. We will run it for you. Like, I, I really am like of all the social media, especially for real estate, like LinkedIn is where you should be. Yep. How, how much of it gets to the point where it's like, it's almost like bragging. Cause I've seen, I've mm -hmm. put another way. I've seen this done wrong. 
-hmm. people only they're only commenting about like how great they are etc and it's a, it's a huge turnoff at least it is for me and maybe that's personal preference no but talk um, about that balance of you know hey reporting successful wins re thought leadership um you know that's one of the things i see and there's i i don't know i when you see it done incorrectly all the time i guess put it that way okay so a note that i have for all of my clients is before you post anything answer the question why would anyone care? And that kind of helps with some of the straight ego stuff because, you know, if you just want to tell people that you bought this building just to tell people, like, eh. But, you know, if there's an interesting deal note there where you had to jump through all these hoops or there's an interesting, you know, deal story there, you can say that instead of just being like, I bought this building, I have financial freedom, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but <laughs> that is the voice I hear it in too when I read it. Um, okay, so what I'll say too is there's the Grant Cardones of the world, right? And a lot of people look at Grant and they're like, I want to be like him. And they then try to like emulate that style of posting in that voice. And I am here all day, every day to say no. <laughs> Just no. Um and I think that we're about to be at this tipping point of these like multifamily influencers, like really just being called out for like the charlatans that they are. Um, the Real Deal, for example, did like a huge piece. I think it's a piece one. I believe they're working on more pieces, but they did piece one and it was like all about Brad Sumrock and kind of how he makes more money selling classes than he does on his actual like real estate. And I would just tell people to be like very wary of, you know, those people just because their audiences are different than your audience. Like they're just trying to sell a class, you know, you're trying to sell either your services um, in real estate or like actual real estate. So they are actually very different audiences because one of them is like, let's just say a thousand dollars and the other one could be like millions of dollars. So therefore it's, it's a different tone, it's a different level of professionalism, and it's, and it's a different audience. If you like this video, check out the other relevant videos that can be found here.